Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. So I have been asked about this a couple of times on my YouTube channel to go through how to use your graphical display calculator. And the one I would recommend personally is what's called the TI Inspire. Now the CX version 2 is out, the version CX is fine as well. Um, there is a CAS version as well, so make, it's called Computer Assisted Algebra. If you do have that, just check with your teacher that is valid for the exams that you do uh, for IB or IGCSE and make sure it's updated with the latest software. But your teacher can help you with that to make sure it is valid for the exams you will do. Before I get started, again, please hit that like button, please hit the subscribe button, and let those YouTube robots know that you like my content and you want another part to this TI Inspire tutorial. Okay, let's get started. So you literally switched on your calculator and you're not sure exactly what it does, where to go, etc., etc. This is where I am to help. Now you'll see on the left hand side I have exactly the same buttons as yourself so you'll see me clicking exactly the same buttons to do the functions that you need to do on your calculator. I click the on button and this is generally the first page that comes up. Okay so you've got different things that the calculator can do. So we're going to focus in this video on this one here. So your basic operations multiplying, dividing, finding fractions, simplifying fractions, etc. Okay. In future videos, we'll then focus on drawing graphs. So how do we draw graphs? How do we find interception points? How do we find the gradient a particular point, etc. And then in a subsequent video, we'll look at then spreadsheets. How do we use the spreadsheet function to do a say chi-squared test, to do a test of independence, uh, goodness of fits, normal distribution, two variable statistics, all that kind of stuff. So let's get started on what we're going to do today. You can either click this button here to go directly, like so. Alternatively, if you want to make a document, you go to new, you unsave, or you don't want to save anything we've done before, and then you click our calculator. It will get you to the same page. Right, let's start with some straightforward uh, functions. So you'll see your times divide plus and multiply are here. Works in the normal way as a calculator does. You go 9 minus 6, then you press the enter button and then you get your answer of 3. Likewise, you click 6 times 7, giving you 42. Okay, if we do 98 divided by 6, we get, as you'll see, you'll get a fractional answer. So your calculator is generally designed to give you a fraction as an answer, but many of you want to use a decimal instead. So you want to have you know, a decimal value for that and get, in this case, 16.3 recurring. It's really easy to do this. All you do is click Control and Enter, and it will give you a decimal approximation for the fraction given. So if we do another example, say we do yeah, 62 divided by 7, you get 62 over 7, you press Control, Enter, and then you get 8.85714. You'll notice that we will get six figures here and six figures here, yeah? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, this can be changed in the menu function. So you'll see this menu here. It's a very, very useful function. Not menu, sorry. Helps get the right button. Document function. You can actually change uh, how many decimals you get given. So this is a useful place to know. And settings and status is an important area to go. Uh, also, if you have yours in a language you do not speak, you can change the language here as well. I've put mine... Okay, that was kind of bizarre. It decided to disappear, which is kind of strange. That's not supposed to happen, by the way. Just putting that out there, it's not supposed to happen. So let's see if it loads up again. But you are then allowed to change the language. Now, I can guarantee your calculator will not disappear when you actually click change language, like it did on my student software. That will definitely not happen. 
Right, let's get back to it. So, I'm back in my calculator. Here it is. It's taken a little bit of time to load, but that's absolutely fine. At home, I'm sure it doesn't. So, we'll make it a little bit bigger. So we go back to calculator, and say we do then the 62 divided by 7 that we did before, and then control enter, 8.85714. You can change this in the document settings, settings and status, document settings, and you'll see it's on what's called a float 6. If you want more decimals, you can go, or if you want more um, numbers basically in your calculation, you can go to float 8 for example. OK, if I do 62 divided by 7 again, and press Control enter you'll see I then get more, um, more figures in my answer. Not the same as decimal places, it will depend on whether there are more numbers to the left of the decimal points, so say you've got 32, then it will only give you 8 actual digits, that's the most thing. important thing to remember. Uh, to write fractions on the calculator, we go to Control and divide, you'll see there's a little fraction button there on your calculator, and this will allow you to actually write fractions in. So, say I want to write, for example, 2 divided by 4, it'll allow me to do that, and it will automatically simplify it for you as well. So we all know that 2 quarters is the same as a half, it'll allow you to do that. Again, Control Enter allows you to get the decimal, which is then 0.5. Our next function we're going to look at is the squared function. So if you want to square a number, so I want to do 9 squared, you click on the 9 and then you click on the x squared button. Works similar to the Casios and how they work. Then you get your answer of 81. And if you want to find a square root, you press Control and x squared. That gives you the square root. We'll find the square root of 16. And you press Enter and equal to 4. If you want to find the root of the cube root or a quartic root etc, we click on control and this button here and this allows you to put what kind of root you want. So you want the cube root of, for example, 81, you'll get your horrible decimal. If you want the cube root of something that actually works, so for example the cube root of 8, it will then give you the whole number of 2. It works the other way around, so say I want to find 2 to the power of 10, you click this button here, gives you the index, 1, one zero, and then gives you 1024. Okay, so those are the standard functions, plus minus times divide, squaring, square rooting, cube rooting, cubing, to the power of what you want. Uh, next function to show you is the pi button. So you'll see there's a pi button down here. So if you ever want to use pi, you can press this button here. So if you want to do pi times, say we're doing a area question, pi times 5 squared, it'll automatically give you the decimal answer for that. So if you're using pi, the general format, the general setting is it will give you the decimal that you need, which then you can round. Uh, next up is using trigonometry, so if you want to use sine, cosine, tangent, we go to the function here that says trig, so you click on trig, and then you've got all the main functions you need. Uh, for IGCSE, for example, we use sine, cos, tan, and then inverse sine, inverse cos, and inverse tan. If you're at IB, I think this is on the analysis course these days, rather than general high level, you have cosec, second cotangent as well, if you want to use those. Okay, so let's use sine for example. So if I want to work out the sine of 30 degrees, notice it says degrees at the top here, then I click and get the answer of 0 0.5. If I want to work out the cosine of 45, it'll do that for me. But notice it will write it as a decimal, it won't write it as root 2 over 2, which is the equivalent to that decimal there. If you are on higher level, yet yeah, both higher levels, you may want to work in radians. The way we work in radians, now with the software you can just click, which is very, very helpful. Um, on the calculator, again, we go to the settings and status section, which is very, very important, document settings. 
and then you just change from degrees to radians. OK. And so if I now do sine 30, I'll get a completely different answer. As you'll see here, if it works at all, which it probably won't work, you get minus 0 0.988. So you see it's very important to have degrees or radians at the top. Now if I convert this into radians, so 30 degrees is the same as pi over 6. So I do sine open brackets pi. Uh, you can use the fraction button or just the divide button, it doesn't matter. Close brackets, you'll see you get the same answer. So you do need to be aware if you're working between radians and degrees that you need to have it in the right setting. I'm going to click it back to degrees. Uh, likewise, if you want to use the inverse cos function, it's really straightforward, or inverse tan. You just go to this, for example. So if I want to find the inverse tan of 1, for example, I get 45 degrees because the tan of 45 is equal to 1. So trigonometry works in that particular way as well. That's uh, the standard functions that we need. Um, you can also do more complicated things. So for example, say you want to find, and many of you do this at the younger year groups, say you want to find the least common multiple, the LCM of, for example, say 10 and 12. Then it will work it out for you. So it'll give you the answer of 60. Um, the great thing about this calculator is you'll see, as I start writing LCM, so if I just type this in on the keyboard at the bottom, so if I type in L, it starts in italics, but as soon as I click the M button, it will then go to normal font, and that means you recognize that it's actually found the lowest common multiple function on your calculator. So if I type in 1012, I'll give you the same answer of 60. Likewise, if I type in the GCD, it will then go back to normal. Uh, the greatest common divisor is sometimes known as the highest common factor. So if I work at the GCD or the HCF of, for example, 12 and 14, you should all know the answer of that is 2, and it will find that function for you on the calculator. Very, very powerful calculator for many number and algebra functions. Um, if you use complex numbers at a higher level, again, it's got a lot of complex tools as well, finding complex conjugates, finding the angles and magnitudes, and particularly important for high-level applications, converting between polar and rectangular and working between the two forms is very, very important. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you, if we're going to a little bit of algebra now, one very, very important function that this calculator has under polynomial tools is find the roots of the polynomial. Now, we'll stick with quadratics, so that's with x squared, basically, and we'll stick with real, so I'll focus on the IGCSE sides. If you have any quadratic, and if you do the IGCSE International Mathematics course, you're allowed to do this. Say I want to solve a quadratic, what it will ask me for is the numbers in front of the x squared, the number in front of the x, and the number here. So, for example, if I do one that I know factorizes and works in whole numbers, so if I do 1, minus 1, and minus 6, for example, you'll see it writes my quadratic, x squared minus x minus 6. Then it has a comma, and then you have to tell the calculator what variable you're working in. So if working with t, then you need to say it's working with t. If you're working with a, then it has to be working in a. All we do is press the Enter button, and then you'll generate the two answers by solving the quadratic. And in the same way that we did GC, GCD and LCM, if I type in polyroots, you'll see it's all in italic, but as soon as I press that S, it will find that function for me. And now it will get me to solve any quadratic I want to do. Remember, X square button, um, go 3X minus 10, comma X, and you'll see it will generate then the two answers. Um, it doesn't always have to generate whole numbers, you could use the quadratic formula on this. Um, the only thing you need to remember is make the right-hand side of your quadratic zero and then just copy over the left-hand side of your equation into the poly roots function. Okay, very powerful tool, so I thought I'd highlight this in this particular video. You can also solve simultaneous equations, so in this function here. So you can say how many equations you've got, variables x and y, click OK. And now you simply type in the two equations that you have. So, 
For example, if I do x plus y is equal to 7, then if I do 2x, um, let's make it plus 3y. And let's make sure that it works. So if we do 17, you'll see that it generates the two answers of 4 and 3. So this comes under linsolve. Again, as soon as you start typing in linsolve, it will recognize that function, as long as you spell it correctly, and then do the simultaneous equations that you need to do. So I'll stop the video at this point. This I would consider the basics of using your GDC. If there's anything you'd like me to else to cover, I'll be looking at graphs next and then looking at using the statistics function on the calculator. And this is generally designed to someone either starting IB, so starting one of the IB courses, or they want to use it for their IGCSE international mathematics exams. Okay. Hope you found this useful. Please like, please subscribe, please say how much you love this video by writing in the comments below. That goes a long way to showing those YouTube robots, as I said, that you like this video. All right, bye-bye for now.